This week in digital photography, I sit down with Al and Elisa Natitis, owners of Photographic Services out of Williamson, New York. I wanted to give them a chance to talk about what it takes to be a full-time professional photographer and just what all has to happen behind the scenes in order to keep the business running when they aren't standing behind the camera creating images. We get into continuing education, managing workflows, maintaining equipment, managing employees and payroll, and much more. I've known Al and Elise for many years now, and I really enjoyed spending some time with them today to get their take on a really important topic for anyone considering a career in professional photography. We are here today at Photographic Services, and we are with Al and Elise the Titus. They are the owners of Photographic Services, uh, and I wanted to take just a few minutes to give them an opportunity to share with the students uh, a little bit about what it's like to be a professional full-time photographer. Um, and Al and Elise have an entire business here that goes beyond just uh, photography. Uh, so we'll get into some of that in just a little bit. Um, can you guys just start off telling me a little bit about the full scope of what it is that Photographic Services offers? We do a, a variety of printing in-house. Uh, virtually everything we do is, is done in-house. Uh, large commitment to photography, which feeds into the printing, and the printing which is fed by the photography. They both go hand in hand. We do wide format printing so that we can do uh, banners for different people, uh, do a lot of sports banners, but we also do our own in-house high-end photographic printing up to 24 inches wide uh, that we do all of our own sports photos, our own portraits. Uh, we do compete photographically uh, in PPA and so we do all of our outputs for, uh, for physical print competition in-house. So, so I think one of the things that really makes photographic services a little bit different is that you kind of are an all-encompassing, like you do your own shooting, but you also do your own editing, at least does all the editing, and then you also do all your own, own output, whereas a lot of professionals are outsourcing a lot of that work. That's correct. There's a, there's a lot of people that we know a bunch of photographers that will use outside sources to, from their retouching all the way up to their, uh, uh, to their printing, where they're, all they do is, is they get the stuff in and they package it and send it out. We made the decision years ago because basically it was a time thing. Okay. That we had the time available, that we were able to produce the work, and we've. The bigger thing is, we've been able to make it work financially. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a great idea that well, I'm just gonna, I'll do the photography and I'll I'll have somebody else do the retouching. I'll do the photography. I'll have somebody else do the printing. But you have to look. At Photography, while it's a great craft, I can't ever imagine having lived my life doing anything differently than what I did. Uh, the reality of it is, it's a business. Right. And as soon, the sooner you learn the ins and outs of business and you learn about the cost of sales, you learn about the cost of business, and you learn how to price appropriately, that's how you can make a living doing this. Otherwise, you may be a great photographer and be very, very hungry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your transition. I know that originally you started out in another field and you transitioned into photography uh, a little bit later in your career. So what was I, that transition about? I was selling advertising and printing for a, a local advertising paper. Okay. And uh, I was what I considered severely undercompensated. So I, uh, I took the idea that they had come up with but never gave it full run to create my business. Okay. And I started off doing printing, uh, all sorts of printing, be it letterheads, forms, stationery, things like that, because I knew that, I knew there was a market for it and I started with that. And then I slowly built up my photography business, mm -hmm. left that business, you know, I, I, had, I had changed it over, but while I was building the, the print side, I was able to concentrate on my photography, build it up, and that's how we did it. Okay. Um, I did have a, I did have a part-time job for a number of years uh, that uh, throughout the, uh, just so that we, we knew we had income. Right. That, and so it was a lot of hours, but by the same token, um, it also gave us things that people don't consider when you're looking at a business. And that was, it gave Elise the opportunity to be a stay-at-home mom, run the business, deal with the kids. And I, I was able to go out and make sure we had enough income that, that we were good with it. So it was, but it was a, 
a lot of photographers, very few photographers ever go, and trust me, I've talked to a lot of photographers across the 42 years that I've been in business, that we all do it the same way. We all start, very few photographers jump in full time. Okay. It just doesn't happen unless you want to go work for a national chain. Sure. And I've talked to guys that have done that, that that's what they did. They were national chain photographers wow. uh, and, and they went full time that way. But mostly people just sort of segue, slide into it a little okay. bit. Okay. So um, we talked a little bit about the, the broad scope of printing and editing and and shooting itself. Um, can you give me like a, a general rundown of a day in the life of a professional photographer here at Photographic Services? Um, what you'll find, and this is pretty much true with any business you want to talk to, um, you will be lucky if you spend 20% of your day doing what your business actually is. Um, it typical, like, I'll come out in the morning, I'll do emails, respond to people, then we'll do stuff like it may be laying out uh, artwork for a project or, or retouching or editing photos, doing selections and things like that. And then in the afternoon, because we do a lot of school work, okay. we'll pack up around 2 o'clock, hit head out on location and photograph on location doing seniors and sports, which is the primary core of our, our photography that we do. Um, like you say, if you could spend more than 20% of your day doing what it is you actually do to make money, um, there's some numbers that I will quote them, and people are going to be shocked and think that you're going to make this horrific amount of money. No, you're not. <laughs> but they say that your, your target dollar, um, whether, you're, whether you're printing or whether you're shooting, your target is $160 an hour. And that's before, that was before inflationary trends have hit recently. Yeah, for and sure. people think, well, so if I work 40 hours a week, you're, you're saying I'm going to make, you know, $6,400. $6, no. What I'm saying is you have to make this elevated amount of money because I don't get paid for answering emails. Right. I don't get paid for reaching out to vendors to discuss projects and stuff. Your actual money-making opportunities are limited. They're small. They... They're a small fraction of what you actually do to make money. So when you say $160 an hour, you're saying $160 per hour that you're actually behind the camera shooting. Yes. Okay. Yes. That, so. that is what it comes down to. And that's the same thing with the wide format. Um, I've had guys tell me that have been in the business for years that that's the target number is when you're running, when you're running a, a printer, you need to turn $160 an hour. That money doesn't, I mean, you need to add in when you spend, after you photograph the job, spend the time converting the, choosing the images, converting the images, and finalizing the images. Yeah. I mean, and that's just one person's part. He does the images and puts them in a folder, and then I take them and retouch them um, before any of our finals um, are, are printed. Right. Uh, before the customer comes and picks them up. But quite literally, you, you're not making any money. Right. The, the only time we're really making money is when we're photographing or, or the, one of the printers that we have is actually running printing. media through it and, sure. and printing. So all the, all the ancillary things yeah. that go along with it. Well, and that doesn't include things like insurances and replacing equipment and mm -hmm. maintaining and putting ink in the printers. I mean, how many printers have you got in this place? Uh, five. Five large scale printers. I have five large printers, large printers yeah. that, that we use. And, and typically, there, there's one that's a little suspect as far as how often it, it's actually turning media. Okay. But when we do use it, it is high volume. It, it, we, we, we run a, run, a, a lot through it. Um, you had mentioned insurance and things like that. I strongly recommend as a professional that you, you have to carry insurance. If you don't have insurance, you will be excluded from doing work for people. Uh, we have to turn in an insurance binder to some of our corporate clients and to some of the schools that we do work for. Sure. They want to make sure that we are insured in case there's an accident. God forbid one happens, but, I mean, a light could tip over and hit somebody in the head. Exactly. Something as simple as that. Trip over a cord. Trip over a cord, something like that. You, you, you really need it. 
and it's going to sound like a lot of money, they want a million dollars worth of liability insurance. It sounds like a lot. It is not. It is, okay. it's, not a, it's not a large amount of money to, to do that. So there's a lot going on besides just taking pictures. You're printing, you're editing, you're managing equipment, you're working with employees, um, you know, marketing, soliciting new clients, going out into the community and, and finding those relationships. Making sure yeah. the supplies for the printers are on hand. That's Al's job. He's always looking. Do we have this ink? Do we have that ink? How about paper, folders? Okay. Um, Nobody delivers bags, on the weekend. You name it, yeah. <laughs> so what would you say was your biggest challenge as a professional photographer? Um, probably uh, the, from, a, from a financial standpoint or as a photographer? Both. Okay. From a financial standpoint, uh, I'll, I'll use the term not seeking professional help soon enough. Okay. <laughs> it, it's, uh, and by that I mean you need an accountant. You okay. really need an accountant. Uh, accountant. When I started the business uh, 42 years ago, I, I'm a sole proprietorship. Okay. At this point, if I were starting the business today, I would probably look at an LLC. Only from the standpoint, we live in a far more litigious society today than we did back when I started. And trust me, we were working with multi, multi-million dollar companies and we had responsibilities to, to turn back to them. But the first words out of somebody, the first thought in somebody's idea, mind when we were doing these things, if there was an issue, wasn't that they were going to sue me. Okay. And some people have this, have this idea that when they come into photography, and trust me, I was there, that the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to establish myself by doing weddings. Back in the day, there was far less um, problems if something went wrong at a wedding. I don't do weddings and I won't do weddings and it's because there's, there's a, the people who do them, God bless them, I've seen some of them, they are absolutely wonderful photographers. They know their craft, they do it well. I don't want the risk and I'm not wired to do it. I, yeah. I, I, I have a mind of a, of a high school kid as opposed to, you know, the romantic shots of doing a wedding and this, that, and the, uh, yeah, I'm more, my approach to, to a wedding is more photojournalistic, editorial right. style than, than the romantic stuff. Yeah, I've, uh, I've photographed a few weddings in my day and I've decided I'm not shooting anymore because my, <laughs> I can't process 58 things going on at the same time and having to manage and oversee yep. all of that. Yep. The photographer is the only person that's with that bride and groom from literally the time that they get to the it be four the hours. Morning. It can be 12 to 15 hours. Right. Yeah, it's a tremendous yep. for the day. commitment. And there's just so many things that can go wrong with a wedding photography. Yep. So I just, I, 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 and I like the path we've chosen. Sure. Um, photographically, we still, today, after all these years, we still, year over year, month after month, week after week, we are continuing our education. Uh, okay. We spend, um, I would say conservatively, COVID notwithstanding, um, because that shut us out of a couple things. Sure. Um, but we spend probably three to $4,000 a year on our education alone, be it workshops we attend, national convention, we have an educational library of books and videos that, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. there's, there's some well-known bookstores. I have more books than they do. <laughs> and it just, it, it, it's, it's uh, but it is, it's, you, you have to keep up with it. Well, and you guys are also members of the Professional Photographer Society of New York Finger Lakes chapter and also members of the Finger Lakes Photo Guild. Yep. Um, so you've got mm -hmm. some connections organizationally for yep. education. Uh, yeah. Yes, and, and they, I cannot strongly enough recommend being a member of a photo group okay i, I the if uh at yeah, one they, of at one of our finger lakes groups i went around the table and before i got halfway around the table uh, there were i, I don't know we have usually what eight or ten people yeah. that are sitting there and would before i got halfway around the table we we were over 300 years of experience in business. Mm -hmm. The reason, particularly if you're new to photography, you're new to business, I guarantee you somebody in that room has, has dealt with the issue that, you, that you're having, be it a photographic issue, mm -hmm. be it a supplier, be it a, a difficult client. Yeah. Yeah. We you all know, have them. Yep. As I say, we've had people tell us that sometimes the most 
enjoyable part of the meeting is the after is the dinner part where you can sit, you can talk, you can hash out problems or ask how you would have done something and find out, you know, so the next time you could perhaps do it better. But, you know, sometimes the after the after the learning part is just as informative as the learning part. And the other important part is um, we've all had experiences in life because sometimes life happens. Without the photo organizations, without the, the people that we've come to become friends with, if something bad happens in your life, it's nice to have that backup where you can pick up a phone or you can put something out on, on your private group and say, I need help covering yeah. this event because of something that's going on a in your life. Event, and, a life and they will, event, uh, and they know. will, and people will do it. They will, yeah. they will, they will, they will pick up and, and, and cover for you, and they yeah. will help you do it. You do not get that from YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. So I, it's, I think that's a really important point, that a lot of people are finding their education by YouTube, and it's not that long-form, supportive network that you that you need as a professional photographer. You, it's nice to learn one technique here and there, but it's not how you're going to run your business. Well, and, and the other part of that is, is you get the... You get the small, you get the small bits and pieces, but in a face-to-face -face conversation, you can get into the details Absolutely. as to how to draw that out on YouTube. Five-minute YouTube, oh, that's great. You got the you got the basics of it, but trust me, you know when you're sitting there and you've got guys that are getting into the details of it. Yeah. It's an interesting that you bring up that point because the other video that we're sharing this week is all about the benefits of joining a camera club at a professional organization. Mm -hmm. And Monroe Payne was actually one of the speakers that, that shared um, something with that. So um, I think that's a great insight. At the end of the day, looking back in your career, 42 years of doing this, if you were to start again tomorrow, is this the field that you would choose? Uh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. It's, um, photography today um, is, a, is more difficult from a competition standpoint than what it was when I started. Back when I started, uh, it was not digital, it was analog. analog film. Uh, we, everything was done on film. If it was out of focus, it was out of focus. You know, if the exposure, uh, some people have this misconception that you can fix anything in digital. No, you cannot. <laughs> it, you, you have to, uh, the, if you talk to a lot of people, they will tell you, the, the, the bracket that you have for a, an excellent exposure in, in digital is as tight as transparency film was. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, missed, it, 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 if you missed color balance on film, it, it was more difficult. Now, um, I've heard guys make the comment, they said uh, $500 for a kit camera, a lens, a flash, and a box of business cards, and poof, you're a professional photographer. Yeah. Well, it's... It's, it's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. It, it's it, it just photography is, is far more accessible now. Like anyone and everybody, we all have cell phone cameras in our pockets, and we all yep. go out and shoot. Mm -hmm. And everybody's a photographer, but there's there's a higher level of competition if you're trying to actually make this your career and your profession. Mm -hmm. It's um, it, it really is. It's I, but I wouldn't change it. I would go back in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, I know we want to wrap this up, Jim, because we have a, a limited amount of time that we don't want to bore people to tears. <laughs> but if I could share any one thing with anybody who may still be listening, uh, the, the advice that was given to me by a fellow who mentored me in the business, this guy was an outstanding advertising and commercial photographer, and the admonishment he gave me was, do no harm to the craft. And what that means is when you deal with customers, be a professional, be prepared, know your craft, know what you're doing, charge a fair price so that the people who come after me will have that benchmark sitting there that they can come in, charge what I'm charging, and make a living doing it. Don't undercut. Don't talk. I, even if you, we don't all like each other, don't talk <laughs> bad don't talk bad about another photographer. Just, Absolutely. you know what, just ignore them. Don't, don't pass your judgment on it. Just deal with what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Leave the craft in better shape than you found it. I, it's the best advice I can give to someone, um, and I've tried my best to adhere to it. 
Well, and I know that you're the education chair, maybe former education chair of the Finger Lakes group. And, yes, and um, I plan on staying involved. And that, that kind of lends into that leaving the craft better, right? Mm -hmm. Helping your fellow peers mm -hmm. become better photographers and better business people. That w is an, is an add-on to the leave the craft in better shape, you know, do no harm. I was also admonished that you have an obligation to share. Um, Elise is is an absolutely outstanding uh, floral photographer, and I'll I'll probably be more heartbroken than her if she doesn't get her master's this year, right. uh, which is something she's yeah. further along in getting than than <laughs> I am. She but she should get uh, she should get her master's this year. You are obligated when you go to a PPA event. This is you're not. I shouldn't say obligate. It is strongly recommended that if you are a master photographer, that you wear your medallion as a master photographer at a PPA event. And when someone comes up to you and talks to you and they have a question for you, master photographers especially, but even if you're just a photographer, you, you are obligated by the code of ethics to share and to, to have an exchange and try and help people out. That's what you're supposed to do. We're all better for it. Every single one of us. It, it, it certainly made me a better photographer, and I still, I still engage in it today. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sure we'll be able to throw some images of your floral work up. I know we've got a couple oh. of students who are doing their, their final project on floral photography. So I'm I sure can send you some, some to something. add to this. It'll be, it'll be a high benchmark. It'll be great work. I've seen a lot of your work on our Facebook groups and our, and our field meetings and things like that. So I, oh. And exhibits. We've exhibited some of those Thank works. Thank you. Um, very nice. And you've earned a lot of high accomplishments at the national level through your work as well. So yep. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. So anyway, Elise, Al, I appreciate your time today. Um, uh, our pleasure. Thank you uh, for, for spending some time and, and sharing some thoughts with our students. Um, and they're always able to reach out to us if you guys have any further questions. We'll go ahead and put their contact information in the video. And again, thank you so much for, for taking a few minutes. Our, and I hope, uh, I hope our students have enjoyed the time. Our pleasure. Happy to share, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. This is where we find out that we forgot to hit the record button.